So today we're going to talk about wax carving tools and what you need to start. The good thing about wax carving is that the amount of tools that you need are a lot more minimal than when you're silversmithing, but when you're carving jewelry and ca having it casted, there's also that second part of it where you have to finish it. So you do have to finish the jewelry, like saw off the sprue and sand and polish and set stones and all of that. But as far as wax carving in general, most of the people that ask me about wax carving jewelry, they're already silversmithing, so they already have that other half of the tools, which is really nice. So they just need the wax part. So this is what this video is for. Someone who is already silversmithing, but wants to get into the wax portion of it all. These are all the basic tools that you need. And then I'll throw in a bonus tool that isn't super necessary at first. It's just something that I found very, very helpful. If you are someone who is not a silversmith yet, or like you don't have the second portion of the tools, then that's okay. I did film another video, it should be up before this one, of basic tools for silversmithing. So that'll give you an idea of what you need for the other half to finish your jewelry. Minus stone setting, because that's a whole different thing. So yeah, let's get into the wax carving tools and now. If you guys don't know me, my name is Adriana and I have been running my jewelry business, Materia Made, for two years. A lot of the time I was silversmithing and then for the last maybe a year, maybe less than a year, I've been wax carving a lot of my pieces and then casting them and finishing up that way. So this is still like, I feel like it's fairly new to me, but it's my favorite method of jewelry making. I love talking about it. So let's get into the tools. So the first thing that you're gonna need is the wax itself. There are a few different colors of wax. There's green, which is really hard. Uh, red, I think, is a more softer wax. There are wax like ropes. Uh, let me see. I didn't have them out because I don't recommend them. The only thing I use these for are jump rings. This particular wax is so, so, so soft that it is really hard to work with and it's hard to melt it together. Whenever I curl this wax, it just breaks. If I try to make a ring band out of it and I touch it too hard, it just squishes. So to me, this is too soft to work with, but it is good for jump rings. And if someone else uses this. It's like different gauges of wax ropes. If anyone uses this and they find like a good use for it, please put it in the comments because if there's a way that I can use this better then I would like to not have it as like a waste. But that to me is too soft. So I personally have only ever used that and the blue wax. I love this blue Ferris wax. It's not the hardest wax, but it is the second hardest wax and um, it works perfectly for me. So I use a lot of the build up method. I don't do a ton of just carving from a block. I do carve like cut rings out of these but um, most of the time I'm building up my wax to create my rings but sometimes I do like for my signet rings and like this dome ring I carved it out of the wax so I cut it measured it and just shaved down until I got the result that I wanted so these tubes depending on what kind of ring you're trying to make if you're just starting out and you want to just save some money maybe go with like the most basic tube same with all the way around whereas this one is a little bit thicker on one side and this is for if you are wanting to like set stones in these rings. Whenever you are first starting, you likely aren't jumping into like setting stones as well. So you most likely would just need this one. But there's also this one, which is for, I found mainly for signet rings or when I'm working with larger gemstones, I'll use a tube like this. And then um, there is this box that you can buy that has like a variety of sheets of wax that are different thicknesses. So I do have some rings that I carve the seat for the ring out of the sheet directly instead of like wrapping the stone in wax or I'll just carve it out of this. It just gives you a totally different look. That is gonna be personal preference on how you want to create your settings, but I like having the sheets also because sometimes I use them to dip my wax pen into, but just having a little bit of diversity helps you always have something on hand to create the piece that you're wanting. So you're gonna want the wax sheets and some tubes. Then you're gonna wanna get a cheap little set of carving tools. So I got these on Amazon. They are, I don't know if they're, I mean, I guess it says wax carving set. It looks a lot like a dentist set of tools. Anyway, if you're like an artist person and you're wanting to create like, you know, beautiful detailed pieces of sculpted art, that's great. And you're gonna want a more expensive set and a more detailed set and a sharper set of wax carving tools. Yeah, those are pricier, but if you're wanting to like create really crazy details and like carve a tiger in there or something, then you'll wanna go more expensive. I'll try and put a picture there. 
I do want more carving tools that are sharper and for more detail just for like the little details that I'm, I'm not an artist or a sculptor so these have been perfectly fine for me I will say though that I usually use these more to create textures so I will heat the the tip of it up and use it to create textures on my jewelry or use it to carve it out but I'll heat it up first so that's how I mainly use these the next thing that you're gonna want is a ring mandrel that has a blade on the side they make them specifically for wax carving jewelry you can see there's like a shiny edge this helps you blade out the ring size that you're looking for so you just cut out the width that you need and then blade it out and yeah uh, you're gonna definitely need one of these then to cut the actual tube itself you're gonna need blades for your jeweler saw different blades so you can use your blade that you already use for metal but when you're trying to carve through huge chunks of wax, you're gonna want the more spirally, it has big serrated edges on this and it's in the shape of a spiral so it can cut through all the wax. If I used my metal one that I use for sheet or my ring bands, it would take forever to cut through it. The next set of tools that you want are some cheap files. I got these on Amazon. They're very, very affordable. This is just to clean up your rings and, and shape them the way that you want. So a cheap set of files are gonna be nice. I picked my least favorite eyeshadow brush and I use this to clean up my jewelry so sometimes whenever you're carving out areas of your jewelry there it'll get packed with wax or just covered in wax and you can't really see what you're doing so I'll take my little brush and I'll brush it out so for all the men out there this is a, a crease brush an eye crease brush and it's really soft and it's actually really nice the next thing that you're gonna want is a battery operated pen I got this one initially and I love it. The biggest downside though to these pens is that the battery only lasts for, honestly, if I'm like having a wax carving day, I'll probably go through like a battery a day or a battery, like a sitting, which sounds like a lot, but this thing is so handy. Uh, this I use this mostly for repairs and for detail work. So if I'm adding granulation onto a piece of jewelry, I'll try and include like what I mean by that and what granulation is. But if I'm adding details like granulation, I will, use my wax pen. I can control the heat with how long I press the button. So, or let's say if I, if I need to make prongs on a ring, I use this to create the prongs. If I take a stone out of the wax setting and a prong breaks, I use this to repair the prong. It's just really great for detailed work. You can really easily control the heat. The tip is super fine, so you can like really direct where you want all of that melted wax to go. These are also really, really affordable. I think I paid maybe 10 or $12 for this and you can get it on Amazon. You're also gonna want some calipers so that you can measure out the width of your ring band. Let's say you're wanting to set some stones in that ring and you wanna make sure that you make the ring wide enough for the certain stone that you're wanting to work with, or if you're making a wedding band and they want it to be six millimeters wide, then you wanna use calipers so that you can measure. You also want another set of, I don't know what these are called, but um, I'll find it out and I'll put it in there. But you also want these. Dividers? I think they're dividers. So sometimes if I want to make like a circle, I can't really do that with my calipers. If I'm wanting to make my ring two millimeters in thickness, then I can't really take my calipers and bring it in a circle nicely. So I'll pull two millimeters out on my caliper set and then I'll measure it with my dividers. I'm pretty sure that's what this is called. Then I'll lock it in place and then I can just put it down and spin it. I really like having these dividers. I know there are smaller ones out there that also have the amount of millimeters like as you spread it it tells you how wide it is i think i bought the wrong ones but just get some sort of divider so that you can mark your wax and make sure that everything is super symmetrical while you're carving the next tool that you'll want is an exacto knife i use this for so much i sometimes use it to stick my gemstones to the end of it i'll use some tack and i'll put it on the end of my exacto knife and build up wax around it or i'll use it to shave down the jewelry and make it more symmetrical. Sometimes if I'm working with a piece that needs to be super smooth, so like this dome band, and I don't want to have any texture on it whatsoever. When you work with wax and before you send it to the caster, you want it to look as perfect as you possibly can so that the finishing process is really quick and easy. So if I'm working with a wedding band or something like this dome band that has zero texture on it, whenever I'm done filing it with my file, it's never perfectly smooth. So I'll just take my X-Acto knife and I'll just rub it across it and it makes it so smooth and almost polished. 
yeah, you're definitely gonna want an X-Acto knife. The next thing that you're gonna want is a spirit lamp and, and some denatured alcohol. Um, this, is, this is really helpful for specifically someone who likes to use the build-up method. And like I said, I, I like to heat up my tools over this little flame and that way I can create textures and build up wax. And yeah, denatured alcohol will burn a lot more slowly, so it's better than using like a tea candle or anything like that. And yeah, this can also be found on Amazon. This is very helpful. The last thing you're gonna need, and this is the easiest because you probably already have it at home. I use a baking tray for my wax catch tray. And as you can see over the time, this is all of my wax that I have used and carved. I catch it all so that not only does it mix with my silver, but I use this wax at over again. So whenever I use my little battery pen, I dip it in this wax, in this shaved wax to do my repairs or create my, um, my decorative embellishments. Anything like this will work. I use a baking tray and then I pull out my drawer and I set it on top of my silver. Let me show you. I set it on top of my silver just like this. So those are all the tools that I recommend for wax carving if you're a beginner and you just want to get like the bare essentials. I do have two more things though, some honorable mentions that I'm really, really glad that I purchased that I will just go ahead and throw out there for you. This is a ring mantle, but for wax, these little bits on the bottom remove and they're all a different size. So I have a whole drawer of these and each one is a different size all the way to size 13 and they just snap on here. And it's nice because it sits on top of my bench. So with this, I can either create my rings directly on the mandrel. I use masking tape on each little mandrel so that the wax doesn't peel up as I lay it on there. So with this mandrel, I can either start the ring directly on it or I can cut it out with this and then attach it to the piece and I have better control and I can rotate it around and it's made a lot of the work so much easier having this and I think it was about $60. Honestly, it was kind of a lot for what it is, but when you get to the point where you want to kind of splurge a little bit, this is actually really nice. The last one I'm going to show you, I kind of want you to take with a grain of salt because I actually don't particularly like this one that I bought. The concept I love and I use it all the time and whenever it works I really do love it but I do think there are probably better ones out there that you could buy and I will definitely be purchasing a different one later. I'm gonna do more research this time but it's gonna be like a wax pen, an electric one that plugs into the wall. So the one that I bought is called Arby, A-R-B-E, but it looks like this and I really love it. It's just, I don't know if I either got the defected one or this is just how it works and it's just not good. I don't know. If someone has this one and I'm using it wrong, please let me know because the quality of it is really good. Like the machine itself feels really nice. When it heats up, it's really nice. I can control the heat well, but it's the pen that I don't like. So I do recommend getting one of these is really nice, especially when you run out of spirit. You don't have to worry about always having like the denatured alcohol in the spirit lamp. It also makes things super fast when you don't want a ton of heat and you can just turn it down or if you want a ton of heat and you can just turn it up. I love using this. The only thing about this RB one is the tip comes out, which it's supposed to come out. But the thing is, is when you put it in, it doesn't heat up. You have to turn it and hold it in place, almost so that it's making contact with the metal inside. But when you stop twisting it and you just let it go, it stops making contact and it stops getting hot. So I always have to twist it and hold it and it makes my hand cramp. I'm gonna be looking into getting a different one whenever I get back to the States, but for now I do use it. But if anyone has a better recommendation on a an electric pin, then I will definitely take it. So those are my recommendations for wax carving tools. If you have any questions or if you are also a wax carver and you have any tools that you would like to recommend, just leave them in the comments. If you have any questions, also you can leave those in the comments and I will see you next week. Have a good day. Bye guys.